Good afternoon, everybody. This is Joyce from BoQ Creations, and I'm happy to have the pleasure to be on Elizabeth Craft Designs website web today to bring you a florals number 17. I would like you to excuse my appearance with my paint and my hair and on my shirt because right behind us you see our new beautiful big store that we are moving into. So we've been painting and moving. So this is our very first live at our new store. So welcome, welcome. Hi, Vaughn. Hi, Deb. How are you? Thank you so much for joining us today. And Margaret, hello, Margaret. So let me get everybody up here on my iPad so that I can see what is going on and then I can read your comments. There we go. All right, so, hi Nancy, hello everybody. So I'm really excited, Dana's here, Yvonne is here. Welcome Pat and Terry, thank you so much for joining us. I also have Dina and Yvonne over here helping, so if you hear them in the background, I got busy little bees over here, so thank you guys so much for your help. All right, so happy Wednesday. Oh, thank you for all the love, you guys. Thank you so much. We are so tired, but it is worth it because you can see that we're moving in and we're so excited. Paula from Boise, Idaho. Hi, Anja. Paula is from Boise, Idaho. Pat, hello. Monique is here. Sir Stampalot in Peterborough. Hello, everybody. Oh, I'm so excited to be with you guys today. So thank you so much for sharing um, your time with me today. Let me turn the camera down. Um, I'm from Orlando, Florida, so um, we are a scrapbook store in Orlando, Florida. I'm also one of the design team members for Elizabeth Craft Design, so I'm so excited. Hello, Josette. How are you? So I'm really excited to be sharing with you guys today some of the florals. I do the realistic looking florals, so I'm really excited about um, florals number 17 particularly. So that's what I'm going to show you today. So let me turn the camera down so you guys can see what is going on. There we go. Let me just put it in the cradle here and tighten it. You guys can go ahead. All right. Let's see what we got here today. So um, I am going to be using florals number 17. I'm also going to be using the fern set, which is 1875. This is a really good set because you've got two ferns that you can use cut down. As you see right here, I have made, um, I cut it out in fun foam and I cut it twice and I've made a stamp out of it. So we're going to be using that today. Um, I'm also going to be using the smell the flowers today. Hi, Anita. How are you? Thank you guys. Hello from Arizona. Leah says she's up from Idaho as well. We've got a lot of Idaho folks today. Um, I'm also going to be using the leaves um, I love this lacy looking leaves from Leaf Set 1956. That was a good year from what I heard. Um, and then the Sending Hugs um, stamp set, the Smell the Flowers. So um, all of these are available at Elizabeth Craft Designs. So as well as BoQ Creations, we carry all happily carry Elizabeth Craft Designs in our store. So hi, Belinda. Thank you for joining us today. Hi, Kathy. Kathy is one of my regulars. You know, I'm noticing it echoes in here. I'm not used to the echo. <laughs> when your stuff is here, yeah, when it's when our stuff is here. All right, so um, I'm going to be making a tag today because I have. Let me just show you some of the ones that I have already created using this new floral line from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Look at these beautiful tags. I'm creating a um, a display board for the expo. Hi, Monique. Karen St. Francis from California. Carol from Phoenix, Arizona. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hi, Char. Thank you so much. Anne from the M State is in the house. So as you can see, these are some of the beautiful um, florals that I have done using the Elizabeth Craft Design um, floral release that just came out. They're absolutely lovely. I'm going to be making them for a display board that we're going to be using at the expo. So the last one that I have to do yet is floral number 17. So I thought maybe you could join us today. Um, I wanted to point out on these tags how beautiful these pots are. So this is also with the release as well. And I wanted to show you um, this one. So the pot serves, um, the die for the pot serves as a bucket or a flower pot. So I wanted you to see the versatility in that die. It also comes with this new release as well. Hi, Katrina. How are you? And Yvonne? Thank you, Paula. I appreciate that. Um, and so I had some um, leftover wood 
paneling veneer that came from a cigar box. And I thought, I wonder if I die cut that, could I get a, a wood looking bucket? And sure enough, you put some Elizabeth Craft Design double sided tape on the back and guess what? You got a nice cute little bucket for those flowers. But look at the pot. It turns into a flower pot from a bucket. Isn't that neat? The expo here in Orlando, Florida, Dana, we have it June 3rd and June 4th. So let me just put these aside and we're gonna go ahead and create a background for our tag. Here we go. And I've got just um, florals number 17 already die cut. It's kind of a weird looking flower. At first it took me a couple of days to be able to, you know, really like it. <laughs> Hi, Ina, thank you so much. So I thought today that I would use um, my um, mold wine ink. I have some beautiful, like, I guess I should show you where I'm getting my inspiration from. So I have this piece of, um, this pack of paper here. It is one of the new packs that we got in, but look at the ferns. Isn't that gorgeous? Like there's that same fern. That's why I decided to use the fern set because I thought there, I'm going to incorporate these beautiful flowers, but don't they kind of look like these? Hi, Margaret. How are you? Thank you so much. So I thought that these would be really pretty colors to kind of make the flowers and kind of just, um, I'm going to cover the tag with this gorgeous paper and kind of recreate um, one of these images that I see in the paper. So this was my inspiration for um, this tag today. So I thought what a gorgeous background I could use. Probably this one. I haven't really decided yet. Honestly, I think I kind of like this one as well. I thought, you know what? I could put some flowers up here at the top and I might do that. I might not even do it on a card. I don't know yet. Let's, let's go ahead and pull that out. We might not even do that on a tag. We might just make that a card. <laughs> Hi, Els. I know, I know. And I thought, how beautiful will it be to, um, you know, maybe put these flowers rolled up on top of here and down here? I think that would be lovely. So maybe we'll just do that. But let's get to the making of the flowers first. So this is going to be my inspiration. And I thought this mold wine would look really pretty to recreate that flower right there. So let me show you what I'm going to do. I had a little trouble with my die cutting machine. You guys will have to forgive us because we don't have everything moved over yet, but I got everything for my craft room moved over so that we could make sure that we had our stuff here for this broadcast. So I'm using the Elizabeth Craft Designs um, soft finish cardstock, of course, because there would be nothing else to make my flowers out of. And I'm also using the scissors. I love these little scissors for... Um, you know, if something gets stuck, these are really good, cute little scissors. So, double-sided, um, I did not put double-sided tape on this one because I want to make sure that I can roll it. Good morning, Els. Leo is watching. Belinda's watching. Yes. Thank you guys so much. I see a lot of our um, names on here too as well. So what I'm going to do is just take one of my brushes here and I'm just going to tip the end of the flower. Now mind you, I'm trying to recreate this flower right here. So what I want to do is just kind of tip that flower right there in this dark red ink here. Oh, Belinda, it's okay. No problem. It gave me a goal. I needed to be over here broadcasting by Wednesday, so it gave me a goal. We've already painted walls and furniture, and we've got some things organized moving in, so I just wanted to um, do our live from here today. What a great, what a great thing today. I'm so excited that we found another store and that we are able to be here today. All of my wonderful volunteers that have been helping us move, I cannot say enough to say thank you. There we go. All right, so that's the first one that I'm gonna do. And that's just some dark um, red ink. And this is what I'm trying to recreate here. You can do it any way you want. In the middle, aw. <laughs> the queen of multitasking will tell me that, Linda, at the end of the broadcast when everything is done. <laughs> When I make it through without losing my mind completely. <laughs> At the same time that we're doing this, I did want to show you um, that you can use your die cuts from Elizabeth Craft Designs to cut out in the, um, the fun foam. And if you cut out two layers of that, you can actually take um, your inks 
like this. Let me show you. I've got a little pea pod ink here. And you can actually stamp uh, with your fun foam and make it look like your die cut, which is really a cute um, kind of look to your stamps. Look at that. Just create your own stamps with, you know, different color ink. Look at that. Isn't that great? That's a fun idea. Do what? We're what? just cutting. Oh, just cut. You guys can. You're good. All right. So I'm just going to kind of create a background here with different colors of the um, the green. And I, that is just the fern that's cut out with the, um, the, the fun foam. And I just doubled it. I've got a couple of uh, greens here. So I might just do double duty here today. I might just create the tag at the same time because I really wanted to show you how you could use these flowers to create your own, um, you know, your own backgrounds and just kind of stamp off and there we go. See, and that makes a lovely background. So I might just leave that right up there in the corner and we'll make an extra flower for that. How about that? So that's a good way to use your fun foam and your dies to create new stamps and stuff. So that's a lot of fun. All right, so back to our flowers here. Let me just wipe this off of our mat so we don't get it. The other thing that I like about the new release from Elizabeth Craft Designs for these, for these florals is this. You can make them as easy as you want or you can you know create these realistic florals so you know just make sure that you have a nice pair of scissors make sure that you have a great pair of tweezers and a couple of ball stylus and that is all the tools that you need so i have a pair of um, tweezers that are the really really sharp um, reverse tweezers i like those as well as my elizabeth craft designs hi diane how are you hello betsy Thank you so much for joining us. I know, isn't that a great idea? So we sell um, a set of ball stylus tools from Tonic. They come with the foam pad, which I really, really love. And it's got six different sizes of ball stylus, but you could even use the back of your tweezers to shape these, these um, flowers. They are so easy. So what I'm gonna do with this one that we just created, I want this red to be curved on the outside. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna flip this over on this side. And you know what? I did not put my ink on the back side. I need to do that. Just because that way if it turns up, then you'll have um, ink on both sides. But I want this to be white, mostly. Just a little bit of the um, red on the tips. There we go. Just real easy. These are so easy to make. You know, they look complicated, but they've made it so easy for us to do these flowers. Hi, Nat. <laughs> I always thought if I ever had a YT or Facebook, I would call it Infinity Crafts because there's always something new to learn. I love that, Nancy. Yes, I agree. Okay, so I'm going to take my medium ball stylus. No water, nothing necessary. This, this paper from Elizabeth Craft Designs just absolutely holds the shape. It's 90 pound cardstock. It's textured on one side, so it's really amazing. And I wouldn't use anything else for my florals. Look how that's already starting to, um, to roll up there. So I'm just on the back side. I just took and pressed it into the mat and it's already starting to roll up there. Look at that. I could almost create a flower right there, not even really doing much. So then I'm gonna flip it back over to the front side and then I'm gonna take my large ball stylus and I'm just gonna press down on these petals to make them turn up the other way. There we go. And then once we um, put these together, you'll see how this flower comes together so beautifully. All right, there we go. So that one right there. And then the next one I want to create is kind of a yellowish brown. So I have my, um, I have this marker here. Let me find it. It's called Golden Brown Blend, and it is from Spectrum Noir. I'm actually going to use the one that has a brush tip. And then I'm going to take my, um, my flower here, and you have to know that when you roll these, this part is going to be the center. So it's a little bit reversed. 
So you start rolling from this end. So when you're creating a flower, if you want something, Austin, Texas is in the house. I use a quilling tool for these dies. Tonic Studios has one. Yes, Carol, that's a great idea. It's just proof that you can use any kind of tools that you want to. It's just so easy for these flowers. Um, so this is going to be the outside, the inside of your flower. So if you want these to be really, really dark, then you've got to color this particular set of petals dark. Okay, so um, I always recommend that you kind of blend them together, you know, and I'm just using, this is an alcohol marker. And then what I do is I then take the medium tone and I start blending the medium tone towards the outer edge. Okay, see, so I have a dark tone and then a medium tone and then a light tone. I've been busy all morning making Cinco de Mayo honored spicy chocolate. <gasps> Kathy, you know what I just realized? It is coming up on Cinco de Mayo. Oh my goodness. I didn't even realize that. That's tomorrow. And this weekend is Mother's Day. I cannot believe it, but time has just flown by. We are already in the fifth month of the year. I cannot even believe it. All right, so I am just coloring this. So this is gonna give me that dark and light kind of contrast. And I just realized I may have this a little bit backwards, but it's okay, it's gonna be beautiful. All right, so I am just adding in a little bit of the dark just to make it blend a little bit more. Just going over it. And then right here where it's gonna go from dark to light, I'm gonna do the same thing. Add a little bit of dark and then go over it once more with the light. There we go. And I'm gonna do the back as well. It's also National Day of Prayer. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, good. Well, I hope you guys Pray for me because I am losing my mind here with this move. We uh, had to be out of our place by the end of May. <laughs> but we found a nice new home and I'm so excited. All right, so I am just coloring this. I'm not going for perfection. I'm just trying to make sure that all of the white is covered up because I don't want to see the white on the outer edge of my florals. But look at this paper. I love, I cannot say enough about the paper, you guys. I will never do florals without this paper. All right, so there we go. We've got our second one colored, so that's gonna be fun. And then now the third one, let me clean up um, my ink right here because I don't want it to get anywhere. All right, so that's our second flower. Now our third one is kind of a brown look. So what I thought I would do is take um, my toffee colored ink, which is kind of a brown. You know, Nancy, it's funny you say that because when my kids were little, I had twins, and when they were little, I used to remember their clothes. You know, like you would have these little onesies and these little socks, and they were just tiny, tiny, tiny. And then as they got older and bigger, their clothes turned, you know, used to fill up the whole washing machine, and you never felt like you got done doing laundry. So, so, you know, it was always like, you know, I'm, I'm doing all of this laundry and it's just forever and ever and ever. Um, the pattern paper, Diane, is from Minte and we do sell it. It's the new botany collection. So with this brown one right here, it's actually a peony um, on this one right here. But I thought, you know what, I'm going to create this with florals number 17 and I'm going to do it my way, you know. So I'm just taking some toffee ink. And I'm just gonna zhuzh this on my Elizabeth Craft Design soft finish cardstock. I just wanted to show you how easy and simple these flowers are. So I'm just hitting it in different spots, making it darker in some spots, lighter in others. It's just gonna give it a little more interest. There we go. And then don't forget to do the other side. You wanna make sure that, um, yeah, so, so, when I would do their laundry when they got older, you know, their blue jeans, now that they're six foot six, you put two pair of blue jeans into the washing machine and the washing machine is full. So it was kind of, I always kind of laughed about that. And now it's like the same with craft supplies. When you've got something this little and you've got 10,000 of them, it feels like that never ending washing machine. <laughs> 
full of clothes. It feels like it never, ever stops. So we are packing, packing, packing. And then, of course, you've got a million pounds of paper and tiny little tools and things like that. So, yeah, it gets to be uh, quite, quite cumbersome. All right, so I'm just zhuzhing the edges a little bit. Now, the other thing with these particular flowers is that you can roll them differently. You can roll them with a tight roll or you can roll them with a, a loose roll and that makes a very different flower. Yeah, those are some big jeans, let me tell you something. And they eat those that amount as well. <laughs> All right, so let's shape this one. We started on it uh, just a minute ago. So what I'm gonna do is I've already turned it over and you can see how the center is kind of popping up because I want it to stand up on that center like, you know, a, a, almost like a pedestal. So as I roll this, I'm gonna leave that pedestal, I call it a pedestal, but I'm gonna leave that kind of untouched, all right? I know this is kind of weird, but follow, follow me and you'll see. All right, so um, I take my Kids' Choice glue, wouldn't use any other glue for my flowers than this one. For some reason, it just absolutely works with the Elizabeth Craft Design paper. Um, I, I don't know what it is. It may be the low viscosity, it may be um, the paper, but it works and I just will not use anything else. All right, so here we go. So I'm gonna take my um, reverse tweezers because I wanna be able to use these without pressing down so they stay closed. So what I'm gonna do is on each one of these petals, I'm going to just take a couple of them at a time and just kind of roll them down with my tweezers. See that? I'm just gonna take a few of them, as many as I can fit into there we go. And you can do this with your tweezers. You can do a couple of them at a time. It doesn't matter. There we go. And we're going to create that flower. There we go. Hi, Terry. How are you? Yes, it is one of the better glues I've used. It's not wet and, and you know, so it sticks to the paper. It's got instant grab and it's really, really nice. Okay. So this is how you roll it. I start at this end, okay? And because we have um, ink on the back, we don't have to worry, but I'm gonna roll it this way in the middle. See, and I'm just rolling it one on top of the other. And you can already see that those petals are starting to um, roll up on one another. And I do stop every now and then and put just a little bit of glue so it stays together. So, there we go, and I'm just gonna roll, keep rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Look at that, isn't that neat? And then all of a sudden you have a flower. I love that. Look at how beautiful that little bud is. Isn't that beautiful? How pretty did that turn out? Oh my goodness. Here we go. And then this is the little pedestal part I was talking about. So I'm gonna put some glue on that and then I'm just gonna finish rolling it. And some people will, um, they'll let the flower kind of unroll, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna keep it onto the bottom of the pedestal sort of because I want it to stand up. Oh, thank you, Yvonne. Oh, thanks, Els. Yeah, my little glue ring here um, is something that we sell in our store. Um, it's from Maker Forte. It's a really, really great thing for florals because, you know, look at that, isn't that cute? So I'm just gonna spread those out just a little bit and I've got this gorgeous little flower and I'm gonna set it to the side so I can um, let that kind of stew for a minute while we shape the other ones. All right. Your glue dries up in it. Really? The silly pot? That's weird. Hi, Wilma. Um, I don't know what that says. Else, can you translate that for me? Thanks, Kathy. So this time I've turned it over and I'm gonna kinda do this little zigzag motion with this flower. I'm not gonna do anything to the petals. I'm just kind of 
rolling my ball stylus in a little zigzag motion kind of on that on that paper and that will give me a different look when I roll up this flower because you know we wanted something to look a little bit different right we don't want them to all look the same there we go so now this one I'm gonna roll from the inside I'm gonna roll the inside of it this way. You can also cut your little petals too with the, um, the Elizabeth Craft Design scissors. You can even like come in here and just kinda snip them if you want to and that'll give you an even different look. Just like that. Just come in here. It really does give it a nice little, these scissors, um, the way that they work, it kind of pushes one side of the paper down and one side up, which is kind of neat because then you don't have to worry about, you know, going along and separating each little petal. It kind of does that automatically. See that? See how it kind of pushes it down? I love these scissors for this kind of thing. And these are also Elizabeth Craft Designs scissors. I love them that they're in pink and they're so easy to use. They fit in my hand. There we go. This is so much fun. They are so easy. You could put stamens in the middle of these. You could roll up a couple of them and put them together because if you let them unroll a little bit, which I'll show you on this one, you can make a bigger flower. So that one's kind of a small one. And this one's gonna be a little bit bigger. Look at that. Now watch in just a second when I get done cutting these. I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna go back again and you can see that those flowers just like they start to separate. And I think that is just so cool how that does that. All right, so now I'm going to roll it. See that? Let me just take a little bit of glue. Well, you know what, I'm not gonna do the glue on this one because I want it to unroll for a minute. There we go, so I am just rolling that up. Now imagine if you did one this way and then did another one a little bit tighter, you could have two flowers right there. Isn't that gorgeous? Look how different that is. I just think that's gorgeous. Now I'm gonna let it, I'm gonna like kind of open those petals a little bit with my finger and then I'm gonna put it in my hand and let it kind of naturally unwind a little bit. And then I get a bigger flower, see that? And now I can take my glue, put it on my little pedestal here or my little tab that, if you will. And because this is instant grab glue, it's the best glue on the planet for flowers in my opinion. There we go. I'm just gonna hold it for one second so that it can it can grab. Looks like a marigold, yes. Hi, Verna, how are you? It does kind of look like a marigold. So, you know, you can make them bigger by just letting them unwind or rolling them differently. So this one I rolled to the inside before I um, rolled it up, but look how different flowers that makes. So it just gives it a little bit more interest and this one, we cut the petals, so that makes it kind of interesting. Now this one right here, we're just gonna leave um, just regular. I'm just gonna take a ball stylus and I'm just gonna wind it up. Roll its little tummy right there, that's all. Just, that's all you do. And I'm gonna do it one more time, just to get that paper really, really broken down. There we go. And look, I could even take and put, if I had another brown one, I could put that in the center, see? So you could even use two of them together. That's kind of cool. All right, and again, very simple. You just take your tweezers, start from the bottom, and I'm just gonna roll it up the opposite direction. Very easy, look at that. And this was just colored with ink. Look at that, look out, oh, don't get in there, you crazy little thing. All right, so there we go. 
and that's going to be our tail end. So now you can see why I say that this is the bottom part of the flower. So when you start coloring that inside part, if you want it to be dark in the middle, just make sure that you, you make it darker on this end because this is the end that's going to be in the middle. All right. So I'm just going to let this unwind a little bit naturally. I'm just going to give it a little bit of help here. And there we go. And now we have an even larger flower. I'm just going to put my glue on it. And there we go. I can just take my tweezers and roll down those edges if I want to. Just to make it look a little bit more. All right, so we're going to let that sit for a moment because what flowers don't need greenery, right? So in this cute little set here, um, they have the most adorable little leaves. I love, love, love these leaves. In fact, I use a lot of these um, these three leaves right here. I use a lot of them in my other crafting because it just, they're the perfect shape, <laughs> perfect size. And so I just take a little bit of this green because it's kind of like an olivey green in this paper. So I'm just going to darken my stems right here. And I just use an, I just use a marker, alcohol marker, any marker will do. And I just make sure I color the front and the back. I'm going to take this off for a minute. There we go. There we go. Now, um, I've made this a little bit darker because I want my stems to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to take um, some sweet basil ink. It's kind of a olivey um, green color. Yes, the kids' choice glue. Now I'm eager to play with the die cuts of my flowers even more. Good, Karen. I'm glad. Yes, the kids' choice glue, in my opinion, is the only glue that I will use for my florals. Um, it They just really... Can I just point out real quick? Look at the texture of that leaf. Isn't that beautiful? That's what that soft finish cardstock does. I love it. And now um, it's in a 25 pack, which I'm really excited about. Um, so now I don't have to order as often because I got a 25 pack of cardstock. So when I'm making flowers, I never run out of paper. And it's 90 pounds, so it's going to hold up really, really well to your. Um, you're crafting. Aren't these the sweetest little leaves? I just think they're so cute. All right, and then while I'm doing the green here, I'm going to also do my um, lacy floral here. Come on, let me get out of here. Maybe we should do the loops. I haven't done the loops in a while. I like those. This is all part of the same set. I got my die cuts all messed up here. There we go. Let's do two of the loops. I'm just gonna color these. There we go. Um, and I have this um, Versa Magic. It's kind of a multi-surface craft ink. And I've noticed that sometimes when I use different kinds of inks um, with my project, it gives it a little more texture. And so sometimes I like to even just vary the inks that I use. And you notice that I used alcohol ink as well as, um, you know, regular ink. And, and I just really think that sometimes it adds a little bit more texture to your, um, to your picture or your project that you're doing. So just varying the inks can make a difference. And then I'm just making sure that both sides are covered just in case I have some white showing. Hello, Sybil. Thank you for joining us today. They missed me today at noon because we were moving our stuff over and I didn't get to do my live this afternoon. So I told them to join me today. Here we go. All right. Okay, now I'm just gonna move this out of the way and clean off my mat here. There we go. All right, so these are just gorgeous little embellishments that you can put on there. So cute. 
All right, so um, I still need to do my leaves. Look how easy it is to do these leaves, you guys. Take your ball stylus and your foam mat here. Take your small ball stylus. It doesn't have to be a big one. And then you just go straight down the center of the leaf, just like that. Already, I haven't done anything to that leaf and it's already looking real. <laughs> I love that, look at that. Uh-oh, you can get the back of that one. Come back here, you crazy leaf. We don't want it to be white. That's why I say you have to do the back of it. All right, there we go. Did I do the back of this one, I hope? Yes, I did, okay. I have found that most any kind of material that I put on the soft finish cardstock, it all works beautifully. It just goes together. All right, so now I'm just gonna take my um, particularly my ECD tweezers. This, the way that these are curved really help to make the leaves. So I just put the curvature at the bottom, you know, the, the tip at the bottom of the leaf, and then I take my finger and I just pinch right around that curvature of that tweezer. That's why I said you don't even need a whole bunch of tools to do this. You just need a foam mat and some ball stylus tools and a pair of ECD tweezers, and that's it. That's all the shaping that I'm gonna do to that leaf. Isn't that adorable? There we go. Just pinching it up around the curve of those tweezers. I love the curvature of those. See, isn't that adorable? Astrid is here. Linda is here. Thank you for liking and sharing. All right, there we go. Just like that. Now, if you want to add a little something, something to your leaf design, you can take your tweezers and just my sharp point twe tw tweezers come back here, and you can just put them right there on the end of the leaf and give it a little bit of a turn. See that? Just turn it. Isn't that adorable? And if you turn it back the other way, because, you know, no leaf is perfect. No flower is perfect. That's why they all look so gorgeous. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay, so I'm probably gonna cut this down because I'm gonna put it on a six by six card. So let me grab my um, trimmer here. So let's see if it's gonna be six by six, I'm gonna need it to um, six and a half, so I don't want to cut off all of those florals at the top. So let's see how we can get some off the bottom. There we go. This, this paper is so beautiful for these florals. So I'm just cutting an eighth of an inch off of either side, or a quarter of an inch off of either side, so that I can have it five and a half. And then that way I have room for a mat on my six by six card. Okay, and here we go. Now comes the fun part. Now we get to shape. So I am just taking my tweezers and I'm very delicately rounding the tips of these. Just rounding it, just to give it a little more dimension and let it not be so, um, so flat. And let me see if I can see the words to make sure they're not upside down. Okay, there we go. We don't want the butterfly flying upside down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these right there because I didn't want it to be so big. Let me see. That one's probably going to go there. So let's find where our flowers are going to be first. Where's my fern? There's my fern. Sorry, y'all, I'm trying to find my colored fern. I had one that was already colored. Um, okay, so there is my flower here. I'm gonna start with my largest one. I'm gonna put it right over top of that brown flower because that way there's still some brown underneath it. Yes, the imperfections make them imperfectly perfect, right? So I'm just gonna put that one there. I think that just kind of helps to match those colors a little bit. And this one right here, 
So that's going to be my flowers. And then I'm going to take these and just kind of go underneath. Put a little bit of that on there. Look at how beautiful this is coming together. And then you get to be the florist. Let me just trim this off. You can see that I've already trimmed off a, a couple of leaves. That's what I love about these. You can actually just take them and cut pieces off. Look at that. And then now you can have um, little embellishments underneath. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh my gosh, you guys, I'm in love with this. Look, and then I can just stick them under. How gorgeous is that? So now, now we have a beautiful, can y'all see that? So we're gonna glue it down and call it done. So all I do is I just take them off, get my little glue ring back on. Let me make sure I've got some glue in here. Another thing too, if your glue ever does this, where you, you can see where I bit the cap and used my teeth to open it, um, my mom would not be happy with that. But if your glue dries up in there, if you just smear some Vaseline around this when you open it, um, it will not stick on you. So little FYI, little tip. <laughs> Thanks, Els. Thank you so much. All right, so I'm just gonna shape this down just a little bit because I want this to be my most open bud. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and kinda, now you could even put some pollen down in here if you wanted to. Um, if you wanted to leave it like kind of a marigold looking flower, you could certainly do that. There we go. All right, now I'm just gonna grab it and I'm gonna put a little tiny bit of glue, just a little bit, and I'm gonna put it straight up on this paper. Let me get my long tweezers. I want it the front of that flower pop it up. And I'm gonna push some of those petals down. So I'm just gonna leave that there for just one second. And you see where I had the darker of the two colors? See how it's more dark in the center? And then it kind of ombres out a little bit. Um, that's because we colored it on the inside at the end with a darker color. So I kind of like that. All right, and we've got this little guy I'm just gonna grab it here with my tweezers. It takes a very little bit of glue to do this. You guys, you don't have to use a lot. Okay, and so there we go. We're gonna stand this one up. This is what I love about this Kids Choice glue. I can stand that flower straight up and down and it'll stay just like that. It won't fall over. <laughs> I have new things, to, new drawers to hide things in. Did you see Stephanie said? Elle, she has new drawers to hide things in. <laughs> Yes, I love my new toolbox, you guys. I'm excited about that. All right, now this one I'm gonna turn um, and just kind of stick a little bit underneath that yellow one right there, just a little bit, to kind of make it look like it's sideways a little bit. There we go. Isn't that beautiful? Just gonna hold it down until it sets for a second. Perfect. And then I'm gonna take my little um, pieces here, little tiny bit of glue. You don't need a lot. And I will tell you, don't put glue up on this part because you want it to stand up a little bit. You know, you want it to, to only stick where you need it and not where you don't. All right, just a tiny little bit of glue on there. And I'm just gonna there we go, there's that. And where's my other little piece? There it is. A little bit of glue. Love this little, I'm gonna stick this kind of right around that white flower a little bit just to make it. There we go. See how that's coming up off the paper a little bit? If I had put glue there, it would not, um, it would be stuck down and you wouldn't have that dimension. So I like to be able to lift those um, pieces off of the paper a little bit and just use that right at the very end to, um, you know, to glue down. So that way you're not, there we go. Now let's take this beautiful leaf that we made and we're going to stick that probably right like that. 
Do you guys ever have a problem committing to where you're gonna put the leaf? Like sometimes I'll say, oh, I like it there. And then I'm like, oh, maybe I should have put it on the other spot. So I find that if I put the glue on it, then it's gonna be stuck. There we go. That one is absolutely beautiful. And then this one, I think we need to have a little bit of greenery right there. Again, just a tiny bit of glue. You don't need it all over the greenery, just a little bit. I'm gonna tuck that right on top. Look at how gorgeous that is. Look at how beautiful that is. So simple, so easy. All you needed was a couple of ball stylus and floral number 17, and there you go. Same, same die cut, three different shapes. Isn't that gorgeous? Now you could put a bow on there. You could, um, you know, just, I could put some fern in there because we have a little, all these different kinds of, um, there's some maidenhair fern, I believe that's called. And I could absolutely take a piece of that because there is some in the set. Let's see, I have some that's shiny. I've done this with some glossy accents. Look at that. And then I could use you know, just cut some off and then I have these other little ferns in here. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? So I can just take a little bit and all I did was brush this with a little bit of glossy accents after I colored it. Not that big of a deal. And then you can just bring some of that fern in there from, from the picture, you know? Thank you, Yvonne. I appreciate that. And then I could use this leaf. I don't have to you know, throw it away. I could certainly put a little bit of glue on it and bring it into the picture as well. Look at that. You can just continue to add. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then a little bit of fern if you wanted to. I love the greenery in it. Um, the glue ring. We sell these in our store, Els. They are from Maker Forte. And um, we sell them and the micro brushes in our online store, Bokeh Creations. So that's what they, what they are. There we go. I'm just going to take that fern. Now this was just simply cut out with some green cardstock. So I'm just going to take my, um, my brush there. I could add a bird. I was thinking about that, Diane, but I don't have any birds over here. But yes, a bird would be absolutely lovely in this. Look at that. So see, you could do whatever you'd like. You could spritz that with a little bit of glitter. You could use a, a glitter pen or um, you know something, which, or you could just leave it natural like that. I love that. Absolutely gorgeous. So you can use your um, your dies to create stamps. Um, so this is the ferns from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Um, I use that to create a stamp. I used um, florals number, um, ferns is 1875, that's this set. I used florals number 17 to create this. Um, I did not use the stamps from that. And I also used, um, See if I have it here. Yeah. Florals number 17. So I think I got everything. The ferns, the florals. So I hope you have enjoyed this live. Um, I certainly have had um, a very good time with you guys today. Thank you so much for joining us. I wanted to give you a, a, a look at that. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And look at how well that glue just fits there. You know, like it just makes that... I know, covering that pretty paper. Well, that's why I put the flower on top of the color that it was meant to be, just so that that way it doesn't cover any of the other gorgeous, you know, you could put baby's breath in there, you could put butterflies, anything you want. Absolutely beautiful. So, Els, thank you so much for allowing me to um, hijack your live today. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And thank you so much for joining us today on our very first broadcast from our new store. So thank you guys so much. And Els, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.